This is a short tutorial on photosynthesis and global warming for Bio 100. We all know that plants need sunlight. And like all organisms, plants need water. One thing that we aren't as aware of is that plants also need CO2, or carbon dioxide. The cool thing about plants is that they can use the energy from light to take CO2 and water and turn it into carbohydrate, glucose. And in the process, they give off oxygen. It's this ability to take CO2 and turn it into something edible that allows life to exist on Earth. Directly or indirectly, everything you eat depends on photosynthesis. Plants can use this glucose to produce cellulose which it uses to make leaves and other structures. Or it can use it to make starch, the plant's form of stored energy, which also happens to be a good source of energy for us. And that's not all we get out of this. Another product of photosynthesis is oxygen, which is kind of important to us. Another thing that's very important to us and to the Earth's climate is that this process takes up carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. As we'll talk about in a minute, carbon dioxide is a greenhouse gas, and it's good to keep its levels low. Now, all of this is happening within plant cells. Here I'm going to draw a magnified plant cell with its nucleus, because plants are eukaryotes, like us. And here I'm drawing these structures that contain light-absorbing pigments that give plants their green color and allow the plant to capture energy from sunlight. These pigment-containing structures are called chloroplasts. And it's here that photosynthesis occurs. Photosynthesis requires carbon dioxide, which is given off during respiration by many organisms, including us. Respiration also produces water, which plant cells need for photosynthesis. Chloroplasts use sunlight to convert these molecules to glucose, which is something that other organisms, organisms desperately need. Without photosynthesis, there would be no food energy, for us or for any other life on Earth. Photosynthesis also produces oxygen, which most organisms need to survive. We and the animals that we eat are all dependent on this process. We can take these products of plant photosynthesis, that is the glucose and oxygen, and through the metabolic process of respiration, produce carbon dioxide, water, and most importantly for us, large amounts of energy in the form of ATP. So I hope you're getting the idea that there's a cycle going on here. Respiration breaks down glucose and produces CO2, which is then used during photosynthesis to produce glucose, which serves as food energy. And the cycle continues. So if carbon dioxide is part of a cycle, then why is it building up in the atmosphere? The first reason is that humans are burning fossil fuels. Fossil fuels take millions of years to form from plant matter. When we burn these fuels, for example, driving a car, the carbon stored in these fuels is released as CO2. The next major reason is deforestation. By reducing the number of trees, there is less CO2 being used up in photosynthesis. And the CO2 released from our fossil fuels has nowhere to go. But why are increased CO2 levels so bad? Well, it turns out that CO2 is a greenhouse gas, a gas that can block heat from escaping the Earth's surface. Normally, the heat that reaches the Earth is reflected back upward and leaves the Earth's atmosphere. But if CO2 levels are high, less of this heat can escape, and the heat becomes trapped. This causes the Earth's temperature to increase a phenomenon known as global warming. 
Global warming has widespread consequences, including potential extinction of animals that thrive in cold climates, such as the polar bear and the narwhal. It will also expand the territories of certain tropical organisms, such as the Anopheles mosquito, which is the vector host for the malaria parasite. Global warming will also impact many agricultural industries, from the winemaking industry here in California to countries around the world that supply us with food. To combat global warming, we need to reduce fossil fuel use and protect our forests. On an individual level, this means driving less, or smarter, and recycling.